Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I'm your host, Andrew J. Polk. Thank you for tuning in, however you may be doing so, be it over on air, online, live streaming through our various, of course, the iHeartRadio app or the iHeartRadio websites, and of course, over on our various social media outlets. Find us over these days on pages either under El Paso History TV, El Paso History Radio Show, or Andrew J. Polk on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Twitter. Twitch.tv. And of course, today is July 30th, 2022. And we're talking about many of the natural experiences, areas, and preservation going on all under the banner of the Frontera Land Alliance and the educational opportunities and ability to get out and see these spaces we're talking about that come with it here. Again, you can find us online in all of those many places. And of course, on some of our great partner pages, including the great Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, up here shortly. And this is, of course, the place where we say Texas history begins in El Paso. And we do have a history moment today at the top of Hour 2 from documentary filmmaker Jackson Polk. Today he talks about the Border Patrol Museum and its significance in our area. So today joining us in studio here for the first hour anyway, we are being joined now by Rocio Ronquillo, Open Space Manager, and Wendy Diaz, Education and Volunteer Program Manager, both with the Frontera Land Alliance. Thank Thank you all very much for joining us today. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Absolutely happy to have you all on because getting out in these spaces, I mean, it's one thing to to appreciate it while driving by in this natural landscape that we inhabit, but it's another, like I have often, one of my favorite drives in town, even just on that level, is probably Trans Mountain Drive because going through the literal heart of the Franklin Mountains and seeing the many layers of natural and geologic history that, again, literally shapes the landscape we inhabit is, well, if I have the excuse to, I'm probably going to do it because it's fascinating and very interesting. And this is something that in part, it's not the only thing you'll focus on, but it certainly is under the banner of what you'll focus on with the Frontera Land Alliance. So when it comes to, I am sure there is someone out there, even though maybe longtime listeners of this show have definitely heard of y'all before, but if you ever encounter someone who has just no idea what we're talking about when we say the name of the organization, what do y'all tell them? Yeah, so... Again, thank you for having us. Absolutely. So I am Wendy Diaz. I am the Education and Volunteer Program Manager with the Frontera Land Alliance. And I do actually encounter all the time people that don't, are not familiar with the organization. So I do have to give them a quick little spiel of what the organization is and what it is that we do. And most of the time, it's always during our events that we do. Mm -hmm. So in that case, then we are in... in an environmental organization. We're a nonprofit organization uh, that focuses on protecting natural areas, working farms and ranches, land, water, wildlife as well in West Texas and the southern New Mexico region of mm -hmm. Archihuahuan Desert, which is where we are in. Right. And so all of that encompasses the El Paso region and it actually also goes a little bit further into Mexico as well. And so in my case, again, a lot of the times, everyone, uh, mostly everyone that I encounter are not familiar with it. So mm -hmm. that's, that's mainly what I like to say with them. And then uh, Rocio, as part of the uh, being, being the open space manager, again, focusing on a little bit differently. But so when, when you're talking about it, how do you go about it? So I usually talk about it because I manage two of the um, open spaces that we have. We have in total four open spaces. That Frontera has, which is Thunder Canyon, Wrestler Canyon, Lost Dog, and Napland. Um, so I kind of manage more more Lost Dog and Napland. So I kind of hide mm -hmm. these open spaces, um, just to make sure that everything's under control, um, and making sure that everybody's following the rules, and just kind of building that relationship with the community of El Paso, um, educating them about Leave No Trace, what it is for Leave No Trace. So when I do encounter the people, I kind of like to tell them the story of where they're hiking okay. um, because I think most of the people don't know. And I think that's something when you tell them, did you know, let's, for example, Napline, it's 353 acres. Did you know it was protected because of the concerns of the community in El Paso of some members? Did you know these organizations stepped up to help? Um, do you know it has the conservation easement and kind of explain to them and you can see in their eyes of wow like I didn't know this was happening here in El Paso and then you 
I tell them, well, that's what Frontera does. Frontera is uh, wanting to conserve, to preserve these open spaces in our Chihuahuan desert, the importance of our desert and what it offered to us and the amazing environment that we have, what the wildlife that we have, mm -hmm. the different kind of species, the plants and our native plants. And it's just building that relationship and making the people fall in love with nature within their community. I don't think many people may be totally dispossessed. I know sometimes criticism comes in, oh, it's so brown out here, mm -hmm. which means that they're probably not looking closely enough at what actually is out there, like with the rains we've been getting lately. My goodness, the pops of color there. I mean, you just look out from, say, um, up closer to the Franklin Mountains, you look out across the valley, across the mesas, and the green that comes out of it, and then the pops of color, you have to know where to look. So I think the appreciation even comes that much better because you have to have a little bit of knowledge from it it's one thing to be able to look at a natural landscape and say wow it's so beauty but to understand it and how it is and the preservation that goes into it very important aspects for all of that here so the alliance of the frontier land alliance and the work that you all do again has a lot of different facets on it so we'll be focusing this hour again on the preservation of the spaces the management of those open spaces that i'll talk about as well as the education parts that come with it here so you mentioned those four spaces right now rocio mm -hmm. and so we have a picture of at least a couple of them here this one we have of a uh, lost dog right yes that is lost dog which is a thousand and one acres um and that was also it's one of our conservation easements that was done in 2019 um it was put through the ballot people voted the community voted and it was preserved through that because of again the concern of the some community members here in el paso so we do hikes for example i hike once a week every month and i just hike the trails to greet people do mm. a little bit of stewardship um so anybody listening out there and wants to hike with me <laughs> i'm here more than welcome um i do my site visits and just kind of build again that relationship with the with the multi-users because for example this is a multi-user prop um recreation area they do mountain biking hiking running and then of course people that bring their um, pets um, and mm -hmm. just talk to them. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of different use of the space here. And of course, that's kind of part of the purpose of why it was also being preserved that way. People may remember that more specifically. Again, mm -hmm. this area we're talking about there, the Lost Dog Trail, because it did come up for a vote. And there was issues involving city council with that because of uh, there was some potential development of the land going on that organizations, local organizers, and again, ultimately Frontera Land Alliance stepped in to say, well, we have some different ideas. And then with those votes going through here. So how's the actual then, when you mentioned stewardship, what does that actually look like? I think most people may be, you know, the idea of, you know, picking up trash and those kind of things, but I'm sure it's a lot more involved than that. So, yes, it's more than that. Um, next year, we're starting our, right now, we're planning our stewardship program for the year 2023. Mm. Um, so, we actually want to have what they're called uh, trail rangers or trail stewardship people that can go and hike these open spaces and kind of report to us how many hikers they saw, how many mountain bikers they saw, how many runners they saw. And then that can give us an idea of the presence that needs to be done there. It also gives those numbers help us to, for Wendy, that she needs to go out there and do more education events or do a leave no trace campaign because we need to start teaching maybe the community about how to properly do outdoor recreation without damaging these conserved lands. Absolutely, because again, making sure that it's still available and not well. I mean, it may it's it's a common thing in any kind of these natural spaces. The one I think about most obviously is like Carlsbad Caverns. People think like, well, you know, I did, did one small thing to damage the area there, but in that case, uh, it's a well that took thousands of years to develop there. So if everyone did that, this place would be ruined for mm -hmm. a thousand years. Maybe not quite as severe in other mm -hmm. places, but in many cases, that similar, very similar concepts apply to making sure people keep it available because someone, I mean, it, to put it in the more common terms, well, I dropped a piece of trash, so what? It's not that big of a deal. But if everyone that went out there did that, had that same mentality, it, I'm not going to say it would be ruined, mm -hmm. but it would definitely not be the enjoyable place that probably drew you out there in the first place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that, it also defeats the purpose of us conserving and preserving the land mm -hmm. we want to keep it the way it is um but also making sure that everybody's enjoying it 
Um, and at the same time, we also have to keep in mind that we are, are humans. We're not the only ones enjoying it. Mm -hmm. It's also the wildlife that lives there. So they're also affected by the choices that we make. Absolutely. So they we're talking about Lost Dog there, and then we also have at least one of the other ones here I want to get to, uh, the Wrestler Canyon area, right? Yes, uh-huh. That's Wrestler Canyon. Um, I don't do a lot of uh, stuff in Wrestler Canyon, but we do trail work. We do education hikes, which is more of Wendy's side. Um, we She does also pickups, trash pickups, um, events, and we're doing a lot of work for Wrestler Canyon. We're going to start doing some working on the trails. So if there's anybody out there who loves doing trail work, um, please make sure to contact us. And we would love to have you or any kind of work that you want to do. Um, tomorrow, we're having a uh, volunteer event at Wrestler. We're going to do some trail work. We're going to do erosion control. We're going to do some lopping, some re just to make the trails a little bit clearer. And we're also going to pick up some trash. Would I be correct in saying that this is an example of the kind of work that can be happening on trails? Yes. So that was for UTIP Project Move 2021, 2022. Sorry. Um, we went, that's Napland. Um, we had some UTIP students volunteer with us to help us clear the trails, which is called brushing the trails. Um, we're trying to get ready for NAPLAN to install signage, trail signage. Uh, we're on almost there to put signage and name the trails. The trails are, have already been named, and we're trying to get the trails ready. So once they're open and we reveal the signage with the kiosk and everything, people know where the trails are because then if we don't do that, then that's when social trails start to appear and that's when damage comes to. Because, yeah, I could see someone saying, like, wait, we're talking about preserving the natural area. But, again, with that picture, we're showing people literally, you know, raking up, changing part of it. But, essentially, it's the idea that by establishing trails, you are making it so that this is the kind of designated use area. And why we encourage people staying on trails so that they, hey, well, that all the use is focused on that. And, therefore, the environment surrounding it remains more or less the way it should be in this case. So that's why it does take maintenance, this kind of work, you know, scraping it up, making sure that, again, the trail is maintained so that, therefore, everything around it can be maintained, kind of in a nutshell. That's the way I think about it anyway. Yes, uh -huh. and for example, Naplan. So we have these conservation easements, just to clear up, um, that most of the conservation easements have different rules that what we can do on these properties mm -hmm. and what cannot be, be done. So on Naplan, we already, the trails were already stable. They were there, okay. but we're just trying to go back and kind of brush them up, make them cleaner, um, add some trail features such as for water control. And as we're getting our season heavy monsoon seasons, oh, yeah. you get those trails that they get end up washing up. So stuff like that we so also do. Keeping them maintained and keeping them working is an important part of it. And again, important part of the work that is done by the Frontera Land Alliance, our guests here on the show today. Again, that Rocio Ronquillo, the open space manager, and of course also talking with Wendy Davis, the education and volunteer program manager, both with Frontera Land Alliance. We want to find out anything more about what they do, this work, and uh, well, how you can get involved and experience it, enjoy it for yourself here. Their website, FronteraLandAlliance.com. That's F O R N T E R A landalliance.org rather i should say if i said dot com earlier it's definitely dot org because you all are an organization a nonprofit focused on the continued development and use of this space so we're going to continue that conversation after this next break already due for that first one of the hour you are, of course tuned into the el paso history radio show i'm your host andrew j polk we'll be back after this break with more talk about the rotera land alliance some more of these spaces we've only talked about a couple so far and we got at least a couple more to mention that you all directly manage and of course the education efforts that go along with it so stay tuned for more after this break here on news radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano 
and see their website at missiondelray.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. We are, of course, the El Paso History Radio Show on Facebook. Go there for our weekly promo announcements and of the topics, description, what we got coming up for you on the program each week. Plus our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, where you can find each of the, well, previous editions of this show there as we have streamed. 
stream them, and plus the entire series of the El Paso Gold DVDs, covering more than the last 20 years of history documentary production in town, uh, uploaded for your viewing pleasure, plus the 20 recent segments from our ABC7 TV series from El Paso History TV. Also a reminder to support some of our advertisers, Pepe's Restaurant in Kenya Tio, open for in-house dining at 6761 Donovan Drive. Better way to go up Donovan these days. We'll be headed out there after the airing of this show. You can call Peppy's at 915-877-2152. 915-877-2152. Of course, home of the one and only Margarita. But again, joining us back here in studio, uh, as we're recording this episode again, Rocio Ronquillo, Open Space Manager, and Wendy Diaz, Education and Volunteer Program Manager with the Frontera Land Alliance. So we're talking about a couple of the spaces that you all have the stewardship of directly. And we wanted to get to a couple of the others. So the ones that we mentioned already included the Lost Dog Trail, as well as Wrestler Canyon. But was at least a couple more that we wanted to get to, including uh, Thunder Canyon, right? Yes, Thunder Canyon. Um, we are trying to get more things done in Thunder Canyon. Mm-hmm. Right now, we just do our annual visits to check out the place. Um, but it's a beautiful place. It connects to through the Franklin Mountain, Mountains, too. I'm... Um, you can see a lot of wildlife, a lot of nice vegetation out there. Um, but we're trying to incorporate that one a little bit more for stewardship okay. and education. There's no trails for that one, but that one I enjoy it because there's an arroyo. So you can kind of do, okay. if you want to go hike, you can hike through an arroyo and just see how the water flows and when moon season comes. A natural trail, so to yes. speak here. But again, yes. don't be there when it's raining because yes, obviously that's not. where the water goes yes, so that would be a bad <laughs> that would be a bad plan in any case here but and then the uh last one that we wanted to at least make sure we mentioned here is uh napland right yes napland nature preserve that was it. that one is 353 acres um that one is uh we also do trail stuff there we do hiking we do stewardship uh wendy also does some education events that she can mention um to you all but that one is pretty nice. We've had uh, some trail work done recently with Utah Project Move, as I mentioned mm-hmm. before. We cleared about, we did some trail work and clear, I want to say like probably 200 and something um, for trail work. I'm not okay. sure. I'm sorry. Um, but we recently, now that one, we're going to start installing signage. So right. it's supposed to happen by August, September. So if anybody's interested to come and volunteer and help us install signage, that would be awesome too, or do any other trail work too. So of course, for the ability and uh, the opportunity to either go up, see these, when you all have events, do those kind of things, or as you say, volunteer, what's the best way for people to do so? Okay. So the, if, the, if anyone wants to volunteer, they can always contact me i would be the let's say the direct contact okay so they can get in touch with me either through a phone call or an email so all of these the there is an information email in our website so i guess okay. if you go into www.fronteralandalliance.org you can go into the contact us section mm-hmm. and search us uh, through there and just contact us through there or info at FronteraLandAlliance.org, yes. right? Yes, correct. Absolutely. So people can find out about those opportunities here. So, I mean, these are some of the four direct areas we've talked about. Again, uh, the Wrestler Canyon, Lost Dog Trail, Thunder Canyon, and uh, Napland. But, I mean, the Frontera Land Alliance's general mission goes well beyond that as well into a lot of different spaces and almost just the general conception we have about, again, the environment and spaces around us, right? Yes, and then you can also find more information to detail about our open spaces on our website, um, the history of how we it came for us to conserve and preserve these open spaces. You can also look at us up at in our Instagram account too, which is EP underscore Frontera Land Alliance. We okay. also have some we announce some volunteer opportunities, not just ours, but from other organizations, just in case people need some volunteer hours too. Absolutely, because, yeah, getting out there and doing things, I know that particularly as we're getting these summer months here, I'm sure you all have them more on the earlier side of the day because 
let's just say later in the day doesn't work out that well. So I can un- totally understand that. So don't worry about that. But also a lot of ways for people to get involved and get out there. And so we're going to be talking more about some of those, you know, outreach and educational opportunities as well. Just to preview a couple here, because I mean, it's one thing to have the spaces preserved and available and making sure people who can use them, but then actually making sure people get out there and understand it is kind of uh, knowing is half the battle, I think is the a good phrase that comes along with this. So we'll be talking more with Wendy about that in the coming segment here. So already due for that uh, break towards the bottom of the hour right now. Again, you are tuned in to the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. We'll be back after this break with more discussion about, again, the Front Auto Land Alliance, the work they do, and how you can get involved. So stay tuned with more here on the El Paso History Radio Show on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the Old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in what is Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. 
Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140. For souvenirs, gifts, and decor, Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan... Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I'm your host, Andrew J. Polk. Have to, of course, mention some of our other great partners in history and promoting some of the local and natural history of our area in other ways, including the group Celebrations of Our Mountains. Find them over on celebrationofourmountains.org or just search it up in your favorite search engine and probably find it on the right place because they have another great list of activities going on and ways to get out and enjoy that natural environment we're talking about, including upcoming visits to the Border Patrol Museum, Everglades, also the subject of our history moment today, as well as uh, Playa Drain Trail bike rides and uh, the Secret Society of John Wesley Harden, which may just be ever so slightly an upcoming topic on this program as well. So stay tuned for that. Again, celebrationofourmountains.org, where to find them. And, of course, we'll be talking further about them in upcoming days and weeks here. But, again, joining us here in studio as we are talking about the Frontera Land Alliance for this program, we are, again, joined by Rocio Ronquillo, the Open Space Manager, and Wendy Diaz, the Education and Volunteer uh, Opportunity volunteer program manager, rather, with the Frontera Land Alliance. We've been talking a lot about some of the spaces that you all have. We're directly administering, but again, it's much more than just uh, a few spots that are being directly dealt with. There's a lot more when it comes to educating people, because again, knowing is I'm just going to call it more than half the battle, really. That phrase has always felt a little bit a little bit hollow for me, given how much that giving people the knowledge and information, because particularly from people not from this area. Coming in, it'd be very easy to look at any particular space and just say, well, it's just uh, undeveloped, not much. I mean, there's not even trees. I mean, particularly from an East Coast mentality, which uh, I've had friends say, like, where where does the stuff grow that's not growing here? But that's just because maybe they're not looking at it the right way. So that's, I'm sure, at least in part, at least in my experience, probably a lot of what you all focus on, right? Yes, correct. <laughs> <laughs> so... <clears throat> Excuse me. So I do encounter, again, a lot of people that are not familiar with the organization itself, as well as just the ecosystem or just the environment in general that we have here in El Paso. And as someone who was born here and raised here, I understand exactly what they're talking about. So I also mm -hmm. grew up without that outdoor experience. Uh. So that is the thing that when I come across with people, a lot of them don't recreate. So I always ask just to make sure what their, let's say, their experience level is. Mm -hmm. I always try to gear our events to a more of a beginner version. Or if someone wants to start with hiking or just start with learning about our ecosystem here, that's what I try to gear it instead of, let's say, a longer, more strenuous hike. So okay. just to bring the community out into nature. So as well, I try to create more of that opportunity to get our community here in El Paso, the outdoor experience, nature experience, or as well as a recreational experience. And personally, I do like as well, they say like the science part of it and the art side of it. Okay. So I try to combine these two aspects together to try to encourage or just inspire people and our community to be to get that let's say an appreciation of our desert and in hopes that they will make let's say better choices to become better stewards yeah i mean that's an important one here and i think that there was kind of a common misconception that if you're hiking in the area that means that you're essentially mountain climbing that you're really you're, you're going more vertical than horizontal for the most part but that's really not the case like sure yes the franklin mountains state park has a lot of i mean if you i mean people often focus on like the ridge trail and things like that and like sure that's there but the fact of the matter is that there's a lot of other hiking opportunities that don't take you straight mm -hmm. up and down there is flat land in our area and in these natural spaces like uh, what we're looking at here or some of the other trails we we're talking about previously like lost dog is primarily i mean yes it's not perfectly flat there are ups and downs but you're not going like straight up a sheer cliff face even if there are also those trails in town yes <laughs> yeah exactly and that's also another point that i like to just 
make sure that I, mm -hmm. that I that everything comes across to the audience. And the beauty of the properties that we conserve mm -hmm. is that they're all really accessible. They're all in between neighborhoods. Right. So anyone can go. They don't have to travel far to get that outdoor or nature experience. Absolutely here. So when we're talking about, you know, just getting people started on trails, that's one thing, but also then getting them educated about the area and, you know, the, again, the natural environment and of course, the, you know, the history of it as well. I mean, all those parts of it, there's a lot of different ways you go about that, right? Yes. Yeah, so I do try to incorporate all of that, let's say into our outdoor walks per se, or nature walks. So a lot of the times I do focus on more of the vegetation Okay. Since there is, of course, the wildlife aspect to it, but the wildlife is not always there if you want it to be. So it's always a let's hope that we see some type of wildlife. I mean, it's not a zoo, so you're yes. going to get what you get. And sometimes it's <laughs> easier to see, you know, some of the smaller things. But that's often then, well, just a very nice occasion whenever you can see some of the, you know, more well, larger wildlife, essentially. But not guaranteed. It is part of the mm -hmm. natural world. And that's, I mean, it almost makes it more special because... If you went out every time saying, well, yeah, there's, okay, that's where the coyote is. And I know that that's one thing, but as opposed to making it a, oh, wait, we saw the coyote this time or mm -hmm. something along those lines, right? Exactly. Yeah. And I think it does give it a more of an experience if it's more of a surprise of, oh, mm -hmm. I got to see a jackrabbit today, or I did get to see a deer today. Um, just recently, we did have a an insect night where we walked the trails. We right. partnered with the archaeology museum. And we were able to see a couple of those night critters. So we got to see some tarantulas, some mm -hmm. wolf spiders, pr plenty of moths, as well as even some rodents that we have here in our really? desert. Which a lot of times in those cases for the rodents, where they're not really well seen. Or a yeah. lot of times people don't know that we have any of that type of um, wildlife here. Yeah, the idea that we just go straight from insects, millipedes, like we were showing earlier, and uh, tarantulas, all the way up to uh, deer, coyotes, and the mountain goats <laughs> that get talked about sometimes. Like, you're missing a gap in the, you know, ecological progression, mm -hmm. my dude. Anyway, so, <laughs> but there's also, again, a lot of, uh, you know, outreach and bringing people into the environment, even if we're not strictly hiking. I mean, hiking mm -hmm. is important and a very mm -hmm. good way to get out and see it, but that's not even the only way that it can be enjoyed, right? No, not at all. So we do also, again, we partner with other organizations or just other community groups here in El Paso to try to bring other types of experiences. So we do a lot with the Girl Scouts. And let's say in for an example of some activities where we can incorporate, let's say, again, that art into it, but as mm -hmm. well as the biology of it. Okay. We there's one which so far has been it seems to be the most um, preferred or the most exciting activity would be a sensory activity where you have a box you don't there's an item inside that box oh, okay. you don't see what is inside of that box and all you have to do is put your hand in it and guess just with your feel of what you touch just guess what the item in there is. And it's a safe item, of course, here. Yes, because of course. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure someone's thinking, like, oh, I better put a cactus in there. You don't do that. <laughs> no, not at all. So everything is safe. There could be toys, anything that is fuzzy, or it's just uh, maybe even a slimy texture, any of that sort of experience. Okay, so we're talking a little bit about some of the things with uh, younger folks there, particularly with the Girl Scouts, like we've been showing up here. But again, that, to, to say that there's a limit on what can be done in these spaces and how you teach about them, the history of it, the natural environment, I mean, there's many different ways, including, you mentioned a little bit there, art, right? Yes. Yeah, so again, uh, personally, I do like the art, and I do try to incorporate the biology and the art aspect of it. So i uh, recently, which we had during our Latino Conservation Week, mm. was a Art Outdoors or Arte al Aire Libre. And all we had is that people from the community would come out to one of our conserved open spaces and just relax and really take in the, the outdoor space that they're in, listen to their surroundings. So we were able to hear lots of quail. We got to see again. Mm. Some of those um, cottontail rabbits as well. Hmm. 
And so all they had to do is just relax and paint the scenery that they chose. There's a concept I'm aware of. It comes from more of a, a Scandinavian mindset of a uh, forest bathing. The idea of going out and, uh, I mean, as much as, you know, literal bathing is important for physical mm-hmm. cleansing, that going out and being in the presence of nature, them having more forest there, is, you know, important for essentially, you know, the mind and the spirit here. Mm-hmm. Similar kind of concept what you're almost going for here, it sounds like. Yes, yes, exactly. So thankfully for, for that event, everyone that participated, they they mentioned that they did enjoy it and it was very relaxing for them just to be outdoors again. Of course, I talked to them throughout about the history of that location, the types of vegetation we had. Whenever, let's say, a type a bird passed through in front of us, we mm. mentioning it. Or even if we didn't see the bird, but we definitely heard the songs of it, just point out, oh, do you hear that? That would be this bird or any of that sort of thing absolutely here so again we are talking about the frontera land alliance and many of their efforts including educational outreach and a whole lot more again that is wendy diaz the education and volunteer program manager also talking with rocio ronquillo the open space manager with frontera land alliance this hour we got to take that next break right now so coming out of this break talking more about some of these efforts what goes into them and again how you can get involved with more after this break here on the el paso history radio show airing in this pre-recorded episode on news radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the Old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, M numeral 1, ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 
and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140. For Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing on this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. Of course, talking about some of our other great partners in promoting different aspects of local history and the discussion therein, including Rick Kern's music podcast, Talk and Rock Radio. You can go to talkandrockradio.com to see his latest editions and episodes as he talks a lot about the musical history, including having put on for many years the Border Legends Tour, which I got to participate in in a production capacity and seeing that and the again continuing history of that very fascinating and the conversations he has now on the podcast and talk and rock radio.com is where you can see that and of course make sure to uh, talk with our friends over there at Patrick Total Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate call 915-588-1850 that's 915-588-1850 Patrick is an excellent realtor has done some great work for us and our family including helping us find and close on our current home that we're having the work done on now. Hoping to move it in there soon, but if you want to make sure you've got the great resources, go to, again, Patrick Total Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate to for El Paso Homes for Sale or Rent. Again, 915-588-1850. But again, joining us here in studio, we are joined by Rocio Ronquillo, the Open Space Manager, and Wendy Diaz, the Education and Volunteer Program Manager with the Frontera Land Alliance. So, Wendy, we were talking a bit about some of the you know educational opportunities out there, but didn't want to miss out on the other part of your title, among other things, the volunteer opportunities, because we mentioned a little bit, and people have seen some of the pictures we had up of the ability for uh, you know trail maintenance and management, those kind of things, but there are many other things people can do out there in the spaces that you all directly administer and help with as well, right? Yes, correct. So for us, anyone that wants to volunteer can volunteer. There is no age limit. Hmm. So one of the, again, the examples or ways that you can get invol- involved with us is through the trail maintenance. If you're more into that physical labor, mm-hmm. if you want to do that, you can help with that. And again, that helps with keeping that user safe as well as the ecosystem surrounding that trail. Um, You could also help with cleanups. So we do pick up the litter from our conserved open spaces. Mm -hmm. And again, that just keeps the area clean for everyone's benefit, right? for the human and for the wildlife. Absolutely. So making sure that it's still the reason you want to go out to those spaces here, very important. But you also have some other interesting ones uh, that I mean, like including well what's going on here in this picture yes yeah, so here for example if you're more into the gardening then this might be another way that you can volunteer so we do collaborate and partner with a local farm in socorro known as bodega loya or growing with sarah farm and we like to take the community out there to their farm and we help them with whatever tasks that they need on that day so uh, it does kind of vary of course but it it does include let's say um prepping the soil or picking vegetables or even just pulling weeds and all of it is just to benefit their organic farm and as well as your experiences so you can learn from there, just how your food even grows from the bottom, from the ground to the top. Yeah, local food systems, another important topic that we don't quite focus on, but we have had a Bodega Loya on the program here previously as well and the work they're doing and uh, and the stuff they're doing down in the, of course, Mission Valley area. So really when it comes down to, I mean, all these different opportunities and ways people can go out, experience them, what do you really hope people get out of this or, or take with them, I guess, more importantly? I mean, leave no trace at the 
ethos is important to me and from my boy scout days you know take um you know take only pictures leave only footprints and take only memories kind of thing but what do you help that really going with them particularly when you're talking about the education part of it mm-hmm. that you know sticks with them if if you really what do you think about it? what's important to you in those yes. aspects so we're or let's say i am more hoping of that the the participant gets again just that experience of being outdoors and really gets an appreciation for the Chihuahuan Desert and in our El Paso region. So there is a misconception that be- that El Paso doesn't have anything here mm-hmm. or because El Paso is a desert that there's nothing there. But it is actually one it is actually the most diverse desert in the western hemisphere and it is also one of the most endangered regions in the world. So it is very important to protect and conserve our desert here. There's so many, so much wildlife. Everything is interconnected and including us, we are part of this ecosystem. Mm. So if there is no healthy land, then our, we don't have a healthy, let's say, um, just living or quality of life. And then, uh, Rocio, we were also talking a little bit about how you got some uh, more programs coming up, right? Yes. So for next year, we're launching our Junior Ranger program for the summer 2023. And it's going to be based on our o- four open spaces that we have. Mm-hmm. Um, they're all going to have their own booklets. So kids can come and enjoy the outdoors. We can start them as a younger age since they're going to be our future generations to um, kind of have the environment and protect it and conserve it. And I think it's great to start at them as a young age, as well as you grow up and eventually become more interested in. Um, we're going to have the Junior Ranger booklets. It's going to come with the pins and patches hmm. so they can collect them all and hopefully build them to the next step, which would be for them to come our future stewardships for these open spaces that we have. Excellent. So again, uh, we've been talking a lot about the history and the availability of these trails and areas with the Frontera Land Alliance. It's going to take us through the end of the hour here again. We've been joined right now by Rocio Ronquillo, Open Space Manager, and Wendy Diaz, Education and Volunteer Program Manager with the Frontera Land Alliance. Thank you all very much for joining us to talk about your aspects here today. Thank Thank you you for having us. All right, we'll be back after the next Top of the Hour and the News Break here on News Radio 690 KTSM. Stay tuned. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the Old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, M numeral one, ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. 
That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page 
Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com. 
m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't... Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. A lot of stuff we're talking about here today involving the Frontera Land Alliance, but now starting off Hour 2 of the El Paso History Radio Show, as we usually do, with another history moment from documentary filmmaker Jackson Polk talking this week about the Border Patrol Museum here in El Paso. The National Border Patrol Museum in Northeast El Paso is the only one of its kind in the United States. It is a private nonprofit museum with exhibits that cover the history of the U.S. Border Patrol from the Old West to Prohibition and World War II right up to its current operations. The displays include equipment, weapons, paintings, documents, photos, artifacts, and hands-on vehicles like the Jeep, helicopter, scarab boat, snowmobile, and ATV. When the Border Patrol was established by Congress in 1924, its purpose was to secure the borders between ports of entry. Agents had to bring their own horse and saddle. Agents had no power to make arrests until Congress acted in 1925. During Prohibition, liquor control became their major job. When World War II broke out, Border Patrol personnel performed submarine watches and guarded internment camps. Then in the 1950s, the Border Patrol began to focus on illegal immigration. The El Paso sector established Operation Hold the Line in 1993, and it proved to be an immediate success. Agents and technology were concentrated in specific areas, providing a show of force to deter illegal border crossers. In 2003, the Border Patrol and four other federal entities merged into Customs and Border Protection under the Department of Homeland Security. The U.S. Border Patrol continues its efforts to control our nation's borders, now using the latest technology. About 20,000 visitors tour the Border Patrol Museum each year. Admission is free, and guided tours can be booked in advance. It's at 4315 Woodrow Bean Trans Mountain Road in Northeast El Paso. I'm Jackson Polk with this History Moment for the El Paso History Radio Show. Also, of course, I have to mention some of our great partners in history, those that help us promote what we talk about here on the program each week. I have to, of course, mention the great Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, and uh, Barbara Given Bainey, affectionately known as BGB, the owner, chief admin, and historian over there. And they have 33,000 members on their page. And please remember, the administrators work hard on promoting and, well, cataloging parts of our history in their own online way. So if you're using their photos or the things they talk about there, they ask that credit be given to the site. So again, Chief Admin, Owner, and Historian Barbara Given Bainey, and admins Rick Duncan, Rick Nahara, Margaret D. Smith, and moderators Ben Vincent and Al Lowe. They're always looking for more help and assistance in their keeping the page on task and on target, which with 33,000 members is no mean feat. So if you want to find out ways that you can be a part of it, they please encourage you to talk with them again. Remember in El Paso when. But joining us here in studio right now, continuing our discussion about the Frontera Land Alliance and the many parts of it that they are dealing with and continue to focus on in our area. So having us joining in here in studio for the second hour here, we do have uh, Janae Field, the executive director, and Scott Cutler, board member with the Frontera Land Alliance. Thank you all very much for joining us today. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having us, Andrew. Absolutely. Happy to have you all on to talk about more aspects of this. So we were talking a little bit during the first hour about some of the kind of current and ongoing events, the spaces that you all administer, as well as the outreach, educational opportunities, all of the very many things that you all do and people can go out and well pretty much immediately see but of course there's a lot of history behind how these things came to be as often is the case here i mean anytime we're talking about land preservation i mean a lot of people's thoughts may go straight back to things such as the establishment of the first national park and things like that so the history of preservation has not necessarily always been a factor, or at least not in legislation anyway, but the things that it's taken to make it happen. Again, there's a long history of that, even in our area, right? Yes, there is. Uh, here in uh, El Paso, focusing on Castner Range and the Franklin Mountains, mm -hmm. uh, there have been efforts from very early days to protect areas along the mountains. I remember seeing a tourist map from the 1930s that had Comanche Peak and, and the poppies actually listed oh, wow. as a place for visitors to go and see. And uh, so the, the population here, the, the uh, El Pasoans, had always seen the Franklin Mountains as a very important 
part, component of our community. And over the years, much of the mount became private, o- privately owned, and there were development plans going on mm-hmm. uh, that many of the people here thought would ruin the the view of the mountain and, and degrade the qualities that had made it so important to the community. And so when in the 19, about 1978, people noticed that there was some activity going on with bulldozers mm-hmm. on the mountain, uh, they, they rallied together and uh, ultimately convinced the city to, to purchase the land from the developer. And then that led to the state actually acquiring the property from the city and uh, the state park being formed in 1979 through legislation from the state legislature. Within that legislation, there was also a component to allow Kastner Range to be preserved Mm -hmm. if at some point in the future it was deemed safe enough for uh, the state park to acquire it. Uh, So the community really wanted Kastner Range to be part of this protected area. Uh, Over the years, uh, there have been a lot of efforts to try and get it preserved, but because of the, the, uh, the use that it had in the past as a firing range, mm-hmm. practice range. There was a lot of material left there that was deemed hazardous. And so the Army, when it closed the range in 1966, decided that it was not to be used by people at all until some decision was made. Uh, but that didn't stop people from trying to <laughs> protect it. Right. And so uh, the, the, the Frontera Land Alliance was ultimately formed in 2005 to try to work with the Army in getting Kastner Range preserved through what was called a conservation conveyance, where the Army would transfer that property to a nonprofit organization who would maintain it as open space. Uh, And those efforts didn't work out. And so the... Well, yet, <laughs> yet. but this is, a that conser- way. this is a conservation conveyance. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, with the uh, establishment of the uh, Oregon Mountains Desert Peaks National Monument mm-hmm. north of us in Las Cruces, the community here began to realize that that might be a very good way to try and preserve Kastner Range as a national monument. And so because Frontera is a land trust, we do conservation um, easements <laughs> right. with, with landowners. And an easement establishes the same kind of protection that uh, a national park has. Uh, there are lots of things that keep it from mm-hmm. ever being developed. And so that's the effort that we've been working on for the last 15 years to try and get the uh, land protected through not just a conservation easement, but actually as a national monument, which would provide that uh, purpose of uh, protecting the landscape forever and all of the really spectacular resources that are out there that everybody here recognizes and has enjoyed for, uh, for decades. And when we say that it was a firing range, and we had some of the previous pictures up there of some of the other existing conservation easements that you're talking about, such as the uh, like the Wrestler Canyon, Thunder Canyon, uh, Lost Dog Trail, etc. The, the the course the peculiarity for Casner Range, it wasn't even just a firing range. I mean, there being like lead spent casings would be its own level of concern whenever it comes to you know more common use. But that was an artillery firing range as well. They were shooting just about everything that came out of a barrel at that point in time on that range, including uh, rockets and other artillery pieces, and which is why in one of the videos that uh, was being produced as I was growing up, the idea of uh, one of the uh, past people at the uh, Archaeological Museum and uh, Wilderness Park, uh, when there was a range fire out there, counting the explosions going off there as it went by, it is still a, well, there's a reason development hasn't happened there already, among other things. So it's kind of ironically enough, kind of preserved in its own way, but not for really able to be enjoyed right now, just because you can't really do much on it before there's a lot of work done. Well, the, 
that's true. There is this history that makes it difficult to develop, but there has already been development that has taken place on mm-hmm. there. Castner Range was originally about 8,280 acres. If you look at the land east of Highway 54, where Castner Heights community mm-hmm. is, uh, the Walmart, the Sam's, and all of that, that was Castner Range. That was 1,200 acres that was actually taken out of the Army's control, cleaned up, and used by developers to create all of this infrastructure that is there now. Um, so th- while the UXOs and these other mm-hmm. munitions that are out there are a concern, they are something that has not prevented development from occurring. And actually, we still have uh, development going on on the, uh, or threats of development still possible on the 7,000 plus acres that remain. The Border Patrol facility and mm-hmm. the uh, tech stock facility at the corner of 54 and Hondo Pass are within the last 15 or 20 years. Those were added in there. The Archaeology Museum and the Border Patrol Museum are actually on land that is within Castner Range. Right. But those 17 acres were deeded to the city and those were cleared of these potential hazards and deemed safe for people to use. So the the community has watched these these pieces of property, these parcels of land be taken out of Castner Range and realize that those unexploded ordinances and the munitions of explosive concern are not a a detriment to uh, the land being developed. And so that's why we're still very actively trying to protect this property and the conservation uh, of it through the uh, designation as a national monument is really going to be the the best solution that we've we've had so far. And there are all of these resources on there that Mm -hmm. some people may may not realize are there. There are permanent springs that flow Mm -hmm. year round up in the mountains that have been used by Native Americans and ranchers uh, throughout history. Archaeological finds, there are quite a few of them. And in fact, the land, the 1,200 acres that was turned over to the city had a very significant uh, Native American community that was there that's identified a number of, a large number of pit houses that Mm. were present there. And that site is still preserved, but it's, surrounded by development Mm -hmm. and you know this is a potential that that could be lost over time but by the same token there are still lots of unexplored sites on Kastner Range that probably have significance uh, or are significant evidence of indigenous people's early uses there are certainly a number of bedrock matates Hmm. grinding holes that are out on Kastner Range Uh, there are uh, rock art sites that have been documented out there, uh, a few of them. So uh, it's it's really got a lot going for it. And uh, the biology on Kastner Range is really exciting too. There, of course. There are lots of uh, lizards and things out there. And in fact, the Texas horned lizard, which is a th- state threatened species, occurs out there. There are a number of plants that are uh, their distribution is restricted to Castner Range and the Franklin mm-hmm. Mountains. And in fact, the poppies that most everybody of is course. very familiar with, this is the easternmost extent of their range in the quantities that they occur here. So there's you know, lots going on there. And so, and it's certainly the military history is something that's mm-hmm. really significant too. And, Protecting Kastner Range would allow us to tell the story of Kastner Range and its uses, uh, but it also, we feel, has a very important current use for the military and in its preserved state as a place for soldiers, uh, many who have come back from active duty and are uh, needing places to 
to kind of reconnect with themselves and, and mm-hmm. their families and stuff. This is a perfect place to have a quiet place to interact with nature and sort of help um, you know, get used to life and society again after being out uh, on tours. Absolutely here. So again, that's Scott Cutler, board member, also joined here in studio by Janae Field, executive director with the Frontera Land Alliance, talking about some of the history of the efforts going on and going to be talking even further about what is going on now due for that first break of this hour right now. So coming out of this break, continue our conversation with them and more about the Frontera Land Alliance. Again, to find out more details about them, this work and the things they do, FronteraLandAlliance.org. That's again, Frontera, F-O-F-R-O-N-T. E-R-A, landalliance.org. So back after this break with more on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140. For souvenirs, gifts, and decor, Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan, near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Pohl. Got to tell you a little bit about what's coming up for you next on the program here. 
are going to be talking about historical preservation in a different way, as well as some important dates in history with uh, Troy Ainsworth joining us coming down from Las Cruces to talk to us about those things and the things going on in the region. Plus, of course, have one more sponsor to remind you about, at least one more, Mission Del Rey Southwest. You can go there with out-of-town visitors or just your friends and family for souvenir, jewelry, gifts, and decor item. Great features of the Southwest. They've got a great selection in right now, specifically of aluminum cast patio furniture. If you love the style of it and even the aged aspect that they have to them, but don't like the idea of the seriously heavy cast iron stuff, this aluminum stuff is easy for even a kid to move, and they've got a lot of great styles that can complement whatever you want on your place, plus, of course, a huge selection. I'm always surprised by what I find out there from uh, uh, Native American produced goods and even including local products, so you can get both the physical and literal flavor of the Southwest. So again, find them, missiondelray.com, or visit their 12,000 square foot showroom on Lee Trevino at the corner there also with Pelicano. Mention the El Paso History Radio Show for a discount or give them a call directly at 915-440-2140. That's 915-440-2140. But again, joined here in studio by Janae Field, Executive Director and Scott Cutler, board member with the Frontera Land Alliance. So when we're talking about the Kasna Range efforts, I feel like if there's any land preservation issue that people are aware of in town, it's probably this one, given that there has been much said about it across administrations at this point here. So those current efforts, I mean, as you mentioned, still ongoing. I, You said that the efforts didn't work when it came to the uh, direct conveyance of it from the military, and that's why I put in the yet, because, of course, these efforts are ongoing, right, Janae? Yeah, the efforts have been ongoing for 51 years now. Mm-hmm. And we are still working towards it. We have no opposition locally, regionally, nationally. And so we uh, keep coming back to the D.C. administration, asking President Biden to please conserve Kastner Range as a national monument. It is something that everybody can get involved in. And we do need everybody's support. And the way to do that is to go to KastnerRange.org and you can sign a letter of support. You can reach out to your local congresswoman. You can reach out to your local representatives at the state level, at the federal level, and ask them to please support making Kasner Range National Monument. Absolutely. So again, KasnerRange.org, or again, the information about all the efforts that you all have going on, FronteraLandAlliance.org, where they can also get in contact with you all about both these efforts as well as many other volunteer and outreach efforts, right? That's correct. We just had a partnership this past Saturday for Latino Conservation Week with Mm -hmm. uh, a congregation came out and cleaned up the road right away along Hondo Pass, which is the southern border of Kastner Range. There's lots of ways to become involved and share your voice and show your support. Absolutely here. So we're going to be talking more with them about this here and including what some of those, you know, recent conservation efforts look like and what is ongoing and will be going on into the future here. So stick around with us. We'll be back after this break and the uh, bottom of the hour news here as we continue the El Paso History Radio Show in this pre recorded episode here on News Radio 690 KTSM. Stay tuned. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the Old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, 
Invest in real estate. M1EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com. M numeral one EP.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long term appreciation, call 915 592 4549. 915 592 4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915 588 1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA-TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre recorded interview on News Radio 690 KTSM. A lot of stuff to talk to you about, and we will continue doing so with our guests from the Frontera Land Alliance. But of course, I have to remind you to make sure to check out the exclusive reporting going on this week only in El Paso Inc. El Paso's business journal, El Paso Inc., is available for home or business delivery. To receive El Paso Inc., you can order it online at elpasoinc.com. Also go there for our weekly promo announcements and our great partners in doing those kind of things. Also, at least one more of our advertisers to mention to you, of course, our friends at Monterey Asset Management have changed their name to M1EP Management Corporation. Again, their website now, mnumeral1ep.com for M1EP Management Corporation. You can give them a call at 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. If you're tired of the rat race or of the stock market chase, you can find them for great opportunities for multifamily property investment and really help make your own wealth that way. Again, M1EP.com or 915-592-4549. But again, joining us here in studio, we do still have uh, Janae Field, the Executive Director, and Scott Cutler 
particular board member with the Frontera Land Alliance. So we're talking more than a little bit about some of the efforts. Again, first hour, we focused a lot on what's available, what people can go and see directly, and now focusing on, well, the work that is continuing to be done, including some recent and ongoing focuses, as you mentioned, uh, with the federal government. And there have been a series of trips that you all have been doing to get more focus and uh, try to advance these causes, right? Yeah, we have been working uh, for since 2014 and before we have been making trips to D.C. We had uh, the week of Latino Conservation Week Mm -hmm. of July 17th, 18th, 19th. We were all in D.C., a group of Cast and Range Coalition members, and we were sharing with various um, decision makers in D.C., the effort that is happening locally to make Castor Range a national monument for to have it preserved in perpetuity. Right. And so, again, following kind of that model that came up with the uh, the Oregon Mountains uh, Desert Peaks National Monument. So getting that then done and some of these events like you have, this is one of the uh, more recent trips I do believe we have on screen right now, the one happening uh, within a week or so, right? right? Yes, it was a congressional reception. We had Congresswoman Escobar as a guest speaker, uh, Maite with the Hispanic Access Foundation, Pastor Moses uh, here from El Paso there in person speaking, and Emily Gomez, a student at UTEP, came and all shared um, our values and the significance of Cast and Range to this community in the region. So you mentioned there in the, the previous segment here that this is not uh, an issue that has any at least vocal opposition, no organization against it. So then the question might come up, so so what's what's the problem here? What's, what's happening? So, I mean, not that anyone would be if anyone would tell me that, well, it just has to go through the federal government, right, as if that was a, a simple step, like I would dissuade them of that. But seriously, it's taken a lot of effort and a lot of time, and again, across administration. So in, in real terms, when you're describing to someone what this effort is going to take, how do you go about even broaching the subject and getting into those specifics? So with a national monument, there are certain things you need to do to accomplish, to move the process forward, to have the land preserved through that process. One of them is to show solid community support. That box is checked and it has been for a long time and it grows stronger and stronger. Another one is to have the Secretary Interior, which is Deb Holland, um, and she came and visited us a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. And she was taken by Scott and many others and organizations up on the edge of Kastner Range through Napland to view it and see the land. That And then after that... um, she hosted a roundtable, hearing the voices of the community. And so that was another step. Um, another step is to look at, do we fit the National Monument criteria for the preservation of archaeological and historical significance, scientific si- significance? So there were efforts worked on that to create a bibliography, to share information about the land, uh, as well as the most recent step was we went to Washington, D.C., and we met in the Pentagon with the Department of Undersecretary for the Army. Mm. We met with the chair of the Center of Environmental Quality and other department heads to share the effort that's happening here, to talk about Kastner Range, to say why this is so important to this community, uh, this population. It's an, an urban setting all the significance, all the value that it has that it can bring here locally, but also the connectivity that it has to the state park. Waco Tanks is here. White Sands is here. Mm -hmm. The Oregon Mountains is just a couple miles from the state park. There is um, significant connectivity. And as you look at America the Beautiful, the 30 by 30 program that President Biden has, it's a great fit. So while we were in D.C., We also hosted a press conference where we shared that we delivered 137,000 letters signed Mm -hmm. in support to the Department of Interior, showing and saying, this is wanted, the community wants this, the nation wants this, please help us achieve this designation. So, quite a lot of effort so far, and then that naturally brings up the question of, what is it going to take at this point? I know, again, almost at the... 
I want to say one of the more vocal points that came up anyway was towards the end of, I want to say, the Obama administration looking for maybe a designation to be made. Obviously, didn't happen at that point. These efforts continued throughout the previously Trump administration and now during the Biden administration. I mean, some of these receptions, these things going on would seem favorable to people out there. But when you're looking at the reality of it, I mean, the vagaries of national government and what can be focused on from one point to another it can be a little bit frustrating in a lot of other ways. And I'm sure you all have had like the continuing you know, focus on this, the need to keep it moving forward has been pervasive throughout. So when you're describing, okay, with all this effort, all those parts in place that you've mentioned right now, taking it to the you know, full execution, where does it go from here? Uh, we continue with conversation. We continue to keep pressure on. We continue to show that this is wanted. It's been 51 years. The community is not going away. We will um, continue to ask and ask and ask and try to move the effort forward. We are here to answer questions. We invite all the administration out. We're happy to always take them on hikes. It's one of our favorite things. Mm -hmm. So they can see, meet the community, get to know the property, um, learn some history of it at the Museum of the Archaeology. And so we, we just stay in front of them, keep them informed, um, keep the pressure on. So when it comes to then looking at, you know, reasonable next steps and, and what's, you know, can be expected at this point with all the effort that you put into place and the conversations with those elected officials and others, appointees and such, I mean, just how do you even consider it at this point? Well, when we were talking with the folks in D.C. Uh, earlier this month, a lot of questions revolved around how can the land be made accessible to people? Mm-hmm. And that was a, a valid question, but it kind of got ahead of what this effort is about, which is actually preserving Kastner Range. And that can be done by simply designating it as a national monument. After that step has been taken and the land is actually preserved and cannot be developed, then people can start talking about the different ways that people can have access to maybe not all of it, but at least the parts that are safe enough to access. And so the Army has already identified a lot of the areas where there are the most concentrations of these munitions of explosive concern or mm -hmm. unexploded ordnance. You know, there's, they're, they're all kind of lumped together that way. But because they've done this, we're already a step closer to knowing how a management plan can be devised that will allow people to access certain areas of the property while we're still leaving these other more potentially dangerous areas closed to the public. And, and the idea is really to make sure that Castor Range is preserved, that we preserve the areas where the poppies bloom Mm -hmm. The view that everybody enjoys when they're going up and down 54. So that's the, the, the first step that needs to be taken care of. And that's something that could be easily done, either by Congress designating it as a national monument, or barring that, if the president has the option of declaring a national monument, a, a landscape, a national monument through the Antiquities Act. Hmm. which has been used uh, quite frequently for designating lots of the national monuments that already exist. And again, so some of the different challenges here are significant. I mean, in some of the ways we're talking about the development and the differences of what have happened in other parcels of it. I mean, really, I mean, in some of those areas, bulldozing was a possibility. I mean, they were just removing all of the surface level and obviously that not being what would want to be done with the preservation of it. But also the kind of way I've been thinking about it is that it's kind of like saying, well, we want to build a house. So we have to have the plan for the house in place first, but you're talking about, let's make sure we've got the land first and make sure that that is able to, so that we can then not literally build on it, but build on the legacy of it in this case and have those future plans to come here is really the kind of the order of operations that you're trying to make sure that the elected officials and those decision makers and those in charge are understanding here, it sounds like. Yes, that's that's a good analogy where you're getting the land uh, and then you're deciding how that land is going to be used. And that would be done through a management plan, a land use plan that would be 
ideally done with the Bureau of Land Management or whatever federal agency is charged with managing the property, as well as input from the community and possibly the state park because Castner Range abuts right. a significant uh, part of the Franklin Mountain State Park. So you ideally would have the this conversation going on between many different groups of interest groups that would help create a management plan that uh, protects the landscape, which is the ultimate purpose, but then allows people to access at least part of it and begin to enjoy all of the beauty and the the options that are out there for sort of soul searching <laughs> activities that are are really fulfilling for people. And for generations to come there. The order of operations, very important here. So again, uh, that's Scott Cutler, also joined here in studio by Janae Field, executive director and board member uh, in their own capacities here with the Frontera Land Alliance. So we've got to take that next break right now. Coming out of this break, we'll get to, again, what those steps are and those potential plans, as well as some of those very important notices about the way the land currently exists. So stay tuned for more here on the El Paso History Radio Show in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690. KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano, and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140, for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. 
You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon-Baney, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-8. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. Again, joined here in studio by Janae Field, Executive Director, and Scott Cutler, board member of the Frontera Land Alliance. So as these efforts continue, we've dealt with a lot of things both going on when it comes to the advocacy, the you know changes being sought from the federal government and others in terms of continued preservation of spaces in the area, as well as those other open spaces that the Frontier Land Alliance administers, specifically talking about Kasner, as we have been this hour. A, I mean, the preservation goes and efforts to get it preserved are ongoing here, but also some important usage reminders for people to make because some of the pictures we put up have shown off the landscape and also have shown other pictures of people hiking through other landscapes. And the important thing to remind right now is that, yes, there are ways, particularly next to the, well, Archaeological Museum and Wilderness Park there to get into Kasner, as is mentioned, but otherwise just a reminder to people to not just randomly go out into it. I mean, there are not established trails for a reason because of the concerns of the space right now. That's right. The Army has been a fantastic steward of this property since the land was closed in 1966, and that's one of the reasons that it's such a special place now, uh, because it's not been developed, at least the 7,000 acres. And one of the reasons, the ways they've been able to do that is by restricting access. Mm -hmm. Not because they didn't want people using the land, but because they felt rightly so, that there are dangers out there that uh, people would be exposed to. So the property, this Kastner Range, has been and remains closed to the public for use, uh, which means you can't go and hike uh, you know, cross-country or on the old roads that are there left over from when it was an active firing range. But the Wilderness Park Museum and the Border Patrol Museum are on Kastner Range land that has been cleared, and there's the 17 acres that have trails on there that you can walk on. And by doing that, you're able to get out and see aspects of Kastner Range that are not open to the public. So I would encourage people to go to the Archaeology Museum or the Border Patrol Museum mm -hmm. and walk the nature trail that they have out there. It's, it's a great way to see the, the landscape there and uh, be able to en enjoy it and see what will be available in the future uh, once Kastner Range is established as a national monument. Uh, 
they're the the effort to make this a national monument has as we've said been a long process mm-hmm. and one of the things that we found when we went to washington dc earlier this month was that the people back there the decision makers were totally blown away by how many signatures we had gotten how much support we had shown was coming from this community and so what i'd like to really emphasize to people here who are listening is that i get the impression that many people feel like the government doesn't do anything anymore they don't listen to the people uh, and what they want done but when we were back there i saw that that's not the case they really want to hear from people and Although things may move at a snail's pace, they still move. And so your participation in this by signing letters, by writing letters on our website for supporting Kastner Range as a National Monument, talking to your elected officials, uh, write a letter to the president, uh, to our congresswoman, uh, to the senators here, to our local folks. Make sure that they all are aware that this is something that this community really wants, and that will keep the needle moving in the direction that will eventually allow Kastner Range to be preserved forever, not just for ourselves, but for future generations to appreciate, just as we have, and I would also say all the people before us who have worked mm-hmm. on trying to preserve Kastner Range. They had this vision, and they're relying on us and you and your children and future generations to make sure that as this is protected, that it be, remains a really vital part of the community and a, a place of beauty, knowledge, and soul renewal uh, for, for everybody to enjoy. Because, of course, even if this, I mean, when, I should say more accurately, because the way I think of this is will happen, when this is done and is able to be done, it's not just going to be something that can just exist out there. It is going to need to be continually embraced by the community, right? Yeah, you have to have this to be a success, um, it has been a long journey. But it's not over just because it becomes a national monument. It takes um, the community to continue to watch it, to be involved. If you want to make a change, you have to be involved. You have to share your voice. You have to listen to other people, and you have to work together. So we need the community to stay diligent, to be aware, to follow the rules of whatever they may end up being on these properties, for Mm -hmm. staying on the trails, not just for safety, but for the preservation of the soil, for the preservation of the plants and the wildlife. Getting off trails, we've seen since COVID has increased dramatically and all the damage that is happening because Mm. people are not thinking be outside of themselves and not thinking of really what's there and what they're, what the effect they're causing. So we need people involved. We need them to be educated. We need them to care and have a voice. Absolutely here. So we'll keep talking about that as we do here when it comes to preservations and the efforts along with it. So again, you've been tuned in here for the El Paso History Radio Show. Again, our guests right now have been Janae Field, Executive Director, and Scott Cutler, Board Member with the Frontado Land Alliance. Thank you all very much for coming out to talk to us about the ongoing efforts, the many ways people can get involved and be a part of all these things here today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew. So thank you all very much for having joined us here for the El Paso History Radio Show. We'll be back next week, Saturday, 10 to noon, here on News Radio 690 KTSM. Have a great weekend, y'all.